Welcome back, Steel Friends. Uh, in our last video, we looked at yielding and fracture for this double angle connection. And so now we want to uh, explore how do we calculate the block shear capacity for this arrangement. So if you have any questions on yield and fracture, I'd recommend you go to the last video. Uh, but in this one, we're going to cover block shear. So in class, we, we talked about the formula that we use in the manual uh, for a, from AI, a, AISC. And we came up with the following conclusion that th this would be a, uh, is unacceptable. We would not want fracture along the net tension area. So that's going to be fracture along here. And then we're saying that we're worried that there's a possibility that this will fail in the longitudinal direction and completely rip out the shaded block that's shown. And so we would say that this is the net shear area. So our net tension area and our net shear area, we could have complete separation. And that would be unacceptable because that would obviously lead to failure of the member. We also said that um, we're also not going to allow failure or fracture in the net tension area but even that if we don't fail in the shear direction, uh, we don't want failure along the net tension and then some sort of long stretching over now the entire length of the connection. Okay, And so we say that we limit this first value by the yielding of the gross shear, shear area as well as a fracture on the net tension area. Uh, once we kind of have that concept of block shear, then it's just a matter of uh, practice in terms of drawing some of the different possibilities for our blocks and then doing our calculation. Um, so here's uh, block one. I think we could expect some sort of rip out of this nature. And so now we need to go about calculating our member sizes. I'm going to calculate these for one angle at a time, and then we're going to have to double this at the end because we have a double angle member. Um, so if we take a look at this net tension area, we see that it'll be very similar as we did for fracture. Uh, we would say that we have in fracture, we say we had the gross area, right? So that's going to be five inches times the thickness of the angle, which is a half inch. Uh, and then from that, we're going to subtract out. Now in the tension direction, we see that we're missing and we're not going through a whole bolt hole, but we're really just going through a half a bolt hole. So here I'm going to take out a half a bolt hole and then just like in fracture that uh, that hole I have to account for is going to be the size of the bolt plus an eighth of an inch and then I got to multiply that by the thickness of the angle member. Uh, and so we do this calculation and this will lead us to uh, our net tension area in this case is 2.25 inches squared. All right, then we want to move on to the shear direction. So it's very similar to the net tension area. We're going to take our net shear area. In this case, we take our gross shear area, which is 7.5 inches times a half inch. <coughs> and then we want to subtract out. And now in the shear direction, we go through one. It looks like we go through two and then a half a bolt hole. So two and a half bolt holes. And so I would, uh, instead of writing this as two and a half, I would prefer to write it as 2.5 bolt holes times our seven eighths of an inch plus an eighth of an inch times our thickness. And so that comes out to be 2.50 inches squared for this connection. Uh, and I pointed out here the gross shear area. So the gross shear area is just this whole length all the way to the front. Um, so our gross shear area is just this first part, 7.5 inches times a half inch. And so that is 3.75 inches squared. All right, so now we're ready to do our calculation. So we're just going to follow that formula for phi pn. Uh, so we say phi pn is equal to phi. Um, phi is 0.75 because this is a rupture limit state. So 0.75, and then we have the first part. Um, so 0.6 times F sub U. F sub U is 58 KSI times ANV, which is 2.5 inches squared. 
plus uh, UBS. UBS is one for attention member. Uh, so we put 1.0 in here times F sub U times A N T or the net tension area. We said that all has to be less than or equal to 0 0.6 times Fy, which in this case is 36 KSI, times our gross shear area, 3.75 inches squared, plus uh, the same value for fracture of the net tension area, 1.0 times 58 KSI times 2.25 inches squared. All right, we do that, and uh, just kind of breaking this out, we have 0.75. I have it broken out into the little components, 87 plus 131, less than or equal to 81, plus 131. So we see in this case, we're going to be limited by the shear yielding. So we see that we get a total of 218, which has to be less than 212. So... We have to go with the 212 value. So 0.75 times 212 is going to give us phi pn equal to 159 kips. And this was for one angle, so we need to multiply this by two angles. And so for block one, we get a capacity Phi PN equal to 318 kips. All right, that's one possible block. The th trick is we have to go through and we have to check all the possibilities that we think could happen. Um, so we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at a second block uh, together. So as we look at block two, uh, we see that, well, maybe this scenario will happen. Uh, we will get some sort of net tension fracture along a diagonal, but both through two bolt holes. And then after that, we'll get some sort of net fracture in the shear direction or the longitudinal direction as such. Uh, again, we want to also look at our gross shear area in that direction as our limit, uh, limiting condition. And so we repeat the same calculations. So for one angle, we go through um, A and T, just like we did in fracture, A and T is going to be now our gross area. <clears throat> so that's five inches times a half inch thick. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, we need to subtract out in the transverse direction. We go through one and a half bolt diameters. So we subtract out one and a half times our bolt diameter, which is going to be seven eighths of an inch plus an eighth inch times a half inch for our thickness. Um, but we did go on one like diagonal here. So that diagonal gets an S squared over 4G term. So we have one diagonal times S squared. Remember, S is the longitudinal spacing. So that's going to be 1.5 inches. So this is S. And then we do that over 4G. G is the transverse spacing. And specifically, we want the transverse spacing along this diagonal. And so in our problem, this is going to be G, this 3 inches. So we do that and we multiply again by a half inch and we can get our total net tension area to be 1.84 inches squared. All right, we look at the, uh, the net shear area, which is in green. Uh, this is the same as it was in uh, block one. So A and V is going to be 2.50 inches squared. So I'm just going to write that same as block one. And AGV is also going to be the same as block one. So AGV comes out to be 3.75 inches squared. Again, 
the same as block number one. All right, so we then enter into our calculation again as before. Phi PN was going to be phi, our reduction factor, 0.75, times now our nominal capacity. Uh, and we say we plug in these different values we have. I now have, it's going to be 87 plus 107, which has to be less than or equal to 81 plus 107. So we see that our net shear areas pretty much stay the same in our gross shear area, but now our net tension uh, section has been reduced. And so continuing our calculations, this is going to give us 194. It has to be less than 188. So this is the controlling value, 188. Um, so we get a value of VPN of 141 kips when we multiply 0 0.75 times 188. Then we need to multiply that by two angles. So we get for block two, VPN total is 282 kips. All right, again, we can continue to do this calculation. Uh, so if you wanna take another look, we might wanna consider block three. Uh, the thing with block three is that block three carries a little bit less load um, because just like in just like in a fracture, whenever we consider a cross section or the free body diagram that's now um, that's now behind one of the bolts, we assume each bolt carries an equal amount of load. So if each of these bolt holes is carrying one-fifth of the total load P, then the cross-section or this block, this cross-section is always only subjected to four-fifths of P, and therefore we need to s appropriately scale up our values for the areas if we're going to compare block three to block two and block one. Uh, so we run through our calculations, right? We notice that A and T uh, is the same as we did for the previous one. Uh, it's going to be 5 inches wide times 1.5 bolt diameters times 1. Remember, this 1 is just, you know, our, our 7 eighths plus 1 eighth of an inch. So you want to just make that note. This is 7 eighths plus an eighth. Uh, and then we have our S squared over 4G term, and then I'm multiplying all of these values by the thickness, and that gives me 1.84 inches squared. Uh, we have our net shear area. Our net shear area has gone down. We're now only going through um, one and a half bolts along the length. So there you have the 1.5. Again, this is the 7 eighths inch plus an eighth inch, and then we're multiplying by the thickness. And then our gross shear area is just the 4.5 inches there that you see times a half inch thick. Uh, so hopefully you don't have any questions in terms of those. Uh, and so we go through and we run the calculation. Uh, for one angle, we can plug into our formula. We multiply all of this again by 5 fourths. This will account for the fact that this block is subjected to less load. We run through our calculations and we get a total capacity of now 292.5. Considering the three blocks that we looked at, the lowest capacity was block number two, so VPN was 282 kips. Now that we made it through all these uh, limit states for tension members, I like to just give a little bit of a summary. So we looked at yielding. So for yielding, we calculated a total VPN of 376 kips. We then went on to consider fracture of this member. For fracture, we got phi PN to be 366 kips. And then we looked at now block shear. Phi PN for block shear is now going to be 282. We said this came from block number two. So this is now our controlling value for the 2L4 by 8, 2L8 by 4 by half member. And so 
Uh, that is like half of our design. Uh, again, for more practice, go on and take a look at the rest of these. Um, we can see that we also now have to design our gusset plate connection. So the gusset plate connection is a one by 12. So we can't ignore the fact that failure could happen in this gusset plate. And so you can see here, I have summarized the calculations for yielding for fracture of the gusset plate. We can then again take a look at our gusset plate. Our gusset plate is likely to fail along a path um, either right here, A, B, C, or we could go uh, on the diagonal like we did last time. But now this is for our gusset plate. So we multiply by the appropriate thicknesses for our gusset plates. Uh, and we go through, we calculate VPN for fracture. We also then move on to check block shear. Here are possible different blocks. Again, our net tension area is going to be the area shown here in red. We move on to our net shear area. That will be given in green. And then we have our gross shear area shown here in blue. Think of this closer to the bolt holes. We do our calculation for block number one. We get 369. We look at another block, block number two. This is a ripping out of the inside here. So our net tension area shown there in red. Our gross shear area is shown here in blue. And lastly, our net shear area is shown in green. We want to make sure we get it on both sides of the connection. So our net shear area is going to be our total gross shear area minus, and then you can see we go through one, two, two and a half, three, four bolt holes total. Um, so that's where I get the three plus a half plus a half. We went through one, two, three hole diameters, and then a half a diameter and a half a diameter here. So. Uh, there we have it. We get our calculation for block number three. We see, again, for this block number two happened to control. VPN was 314 kips. We summarize our uh, limit states for the gusset plate. We have yielding, fracture, and block shear. Block shear seems to control for the gusset plate. Then we need to look at the gusset plate and the double angle, and we see that the capacity for the double angle was the lowest overall. And so this is our final answer. You can double bolt it in. And there we go. This connection that we had in the original design of the connection can hold up to 282 kips um, before we could reasonably expect failure to possibly occur. So I hope you're rocking this block shear stuff. Hope you're enjoying it. And looking forward to doing some more calculations with you in the next lesson.